Welcome to Global One Media Stocks to Watch. I'm Michael Swido. Today, we take a deep dive into the world of over-the-counter crypto trading. What is it? Who's doing it? And how could you benefit? My guests today are NetCoin CEO, Fraser Matthews, and his colleague, the head of OTC Sales and Trading, Andrew Bullman. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Thanks for having us, Michael. Let's start with a basic question. What's the difference between trading cryptocurrencies on the NetCoin's exchange and using the -the over-the-counter service? Andrew, can you give us a quick primer on that? Yeah, of course. Um, so so the, the primary differences would be around um, off exchange trading. Uh, trading OTC uh, gives direct access to deep liquidity. Uh, a lot of the time, larger transactions will take um, a long time to fill in an order book on an exchange. So going to an OTC desk provides a personalized service. You actually get to speak to somebody um, and they get to communicate with you to what's going on in the market and provide you an all-in price uh, for execution. It's seamless, uh, it's quick, and um, again, you actually get to communicate with a human. So I, I think that that provides uh, confidence to the, the trader that, that they're getting the best price. And um, through OTC, the execution is far superior uh, compared to an exchange. And if I understand correctly, OTC means you're actually matching up one buyer with one seller, as opposed to an exchange where uh, I mean, there's a whole bunch of people in both categories. Is that accurate? Um, not all the time. Um, sometimes liquidity could be found from within um, our own inventories. Um, and sometimes, a lot of the time, most of the time, we're going to the market and looking for that liquidity with our counterparties. I want to dive a little deeper into why businesses are doing this uh, and why they're using Bitcoin. I mean, there have been a couple of high profile businesses that have adopted Bitcoin as their primary treasury asset. Uh, The best known case is probably MicroStrategy. Uh, Before the launch of Bitcoin ETFs, MicroStrategy shares in many ways became a proxy for people wanting to invest in Bitcoin. Uh, More recently, there's a a medtech company called Semler Scientific. They've adopted a similar approach. And you know, while we don't have the exact details, it's likely that these companies are making any large purchases on the -the over-the-counter exchange rather than on a exchange between, you know, normal exchange. So why is that? Do they get a better price or does OTC somehow lower their risk? Um, These firms, these institutions, these investments are certainly made over the counter. Um, It's the personalized service. It's the the quick direct access to the market specific. uh, These these transactions are fairly large. So they want to get them done very quickly. They don't want to be um, trading on an exchange where they need to stare at an order book. Uh, there's going to be market impact also when these trades uh, go into the market. Um, so they want that level of service and they want that, um, that, that, that to be comfortable knowing that their trade is done uh, very quickly and they got the price of execution that they were looking for. I just want to dive into that again for a second. When you say they get the level of service, what type of service are they getting? So the service comes on uh, the execution of the trade itself. Um, exchanges really don't have the liquidity needed to execute those larger ticket qu- trades. So the level of service is actually, you know, speaking to a person um, that can provide an all-in price. Um, so a lot of the time on exchanges, there's actually there's actually fees that come after the trade. Um, so ag- again, that level of service comes from talking to a person directly. Um, and executing that trade with them, knowing the trade is done, filled, um, and that that specific price of execution is done. All right, I can see that would bring confidence. I mean, it's always good to talk to someone. Uh, Frasier, let's bring you into the conversation now. Um, Aside from using cryptocurrencies as a store of value, what are some of the other innovative ways that you've been seeing businesses, that you've been seeing your clients use crypto? Yeah, it's been it's been a really interesting uh, year around around that side of the business uh, for us and out in the market as well. So, with the ETFs coming into play, we're seeing billions of dollars of inflows into crypto, whether it's direct or indirect through these ETFs. But in addition to that, uh, cash reserves are being transferred into Bitcoin as a store of value. Um, the comparison to gold persists over time and we continue to see organizations looking to use Bitcoin as a primary reserve asset. In addition to that, uh, transactionally speaking, the use of cryptocurrencies, not just Bitcoin, uh, is evolving. 
with faster settlement times, ease of use, quicker transfers, and lower fees, we are seeing other crypto assets uh, like Ethereum, like Ripple, like Litecoin used for these types of transactions. And finally, we are actually starting to see more transactions from organizations being done with Bitcoin. For example, a number of real estate firms are now utilizing Bitcoin as part of the transaction. So either realtors or individuals accepting Bitcoin for the transactions or for international trade, moving the Bitcoin globally for a lower fee uh, to execute on that transaction. So it's really interesting to see that take place. That is interesting. Uh, crypto for property. I like that. Um, another question, Fraser. I mean, most of our viewers are retail investors. So when do you think they should consider using an OTC service as opposed to the exchange? Yeah, great question. So when it comes down for retail users, um, a couple of different factors would come into play. So large value transactions where you want to have real transparency into the flow of funds. So it starts with even submitting your wire and getting your, your funds processed with us. So uh, we're able to communicate with customers on a one-to-one -one basis on what's going on with the transaction speed, when it's arriving at our bank, when it's landed, when your account's been funded. After that, working with our team around the pricing, so making sure that you can get the best price possible based on the market, locked in with our team. Um, and after that, if you want to do anything around a withdrawal, if you want to use cold storage, if you want to store it with net coins, um, we're able to give you some guidance on how to do that and make sure that you know for retail investors where it's large sums, um, it's your money. We want to make sure that you're there throughout the entire process with a deep understanding of uh, where your funds are at all times. Is there a minimum threshold for using OTC? Uh, there is. Uh, we do look to look at transactions that are typically 10,000 or 20,000 and above. Um, we will work with certain clients depending on what their needs are on a one-off transaction basis um, or as well on a, a value basis for their total portfolio. Okay, so 10,000 or 20,000 Canadian dollars and above? Correct. Got it. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of the a lot of the time, these um, type of retail customers make numerous trades throughout the year. Um, so we're not going to say no to a ten thousand dollar trade, a twenty thousand dollar trade. Um, but um, cumulatively, over the year, these these retail customers are are likely doing hundreds of thousands of dollars in transactions. So um, we're not going to say no. Um, we treat them as a customer that is, um, you know, the same way we treat a customer that does a hundred million. Uh, so that that's the level of service that comes along with OTC trading. I think that kind of segues into my next question, Andrew. Uh, there are a number of OTC platforms out there. So how mm -hmm. would you describe Netcoin's approach to OTC transactions? And what do you think makes you stand out from other platforms? Sure, that's a very good question. Um, well, the, the digital asset space is still very, it's very early. Um, and, and every company, every service provider in this space is still growing, looking to service new uh, use cases for crypto um, and, and looking to grow their product suite. So uh, when it comes to OTC trading and, and trading as a whole, um, it's sometimes very difficult to differentiate your desk um, but but we're always looking for new innovative ways to do that. Um, it largely comes down to service. I think at this point, liquidity is another thing. Being able to transact those large ticket sales and provide that confidence to the customer uh, that you can take down that $50 million trade, $60 million trade, $100 million trade. Uh, um, that's something that I think is a dif differentiator, having the liquidity and the level of service uh, to provide that confidence to the customer. Um, another thing I think to speak about is is very quick fiat and, and crypto settlement. Um, so uh, a lot of these customers trading over the counter, they want their trade to be done quickly and they want their settlement to be done quickly. So they want those U.S. dollars in their bank account in a matter of hours um, or within a matter of hours. And they want that crypto settlement right away. Uh, they don't want to wait till next day or two days or three days. Uh, which is what some of the wait times are when you're trading on an exchange. Yeah, I've talked to a lot of people in the industry, people who are trading and investing, and there is that frustration with some platforms that you just don't know how long it's going to take before that settlement occurs. And there's like an uncertainty, has it gone through? And sometimes, you know, you're dealing with large amounts of money. So uh, definitely to have that confidence that it's coming through quickly is important. 
Uh, you know, Absolutely. Andrew, I was looking a bit at your, your CV, right? And you've worked in a number of companies in this space, uh, both in crypto and in finance. Uh, you joined Netcoins about nine months ago. So I'm curious, uh, since you're leading the OTC effort, what are your plans for growing this business? Uh, for growing the business here at Netcoins, I think we wanted to um, start with putting in place some values, putting in place the right uh, liquidity counterparties, um, and creating a roadmap that I think is um, you know, going to take us to the next level. Um, we don't want to get ahead of ourselves. We don't want to build too fast, uh, grow too quickly. Uh, you've seen a lot of other firms do that, uh, and, and it's been their detriment. So, um, you know, we want to stick to spot trading right now through OTC. Uh, we want to expand our corporate services um, in the near future. Uh, recently, we've just um, we've just brought on two new uh, account managers, an institutional sa institutional salesperson in the United States, uh, and one also in on the Canadian side of the business. Uh, so they'll be they'll be coming starting on July eighth. Uh, so it's coming up very quickly. Um, so growing the team, uh, I think, is one thing and uh, carefully uh, planning our, our product, uh, how we offer trading services, whether that be in, in options, derivatives, um, whether we, we, we offer lending, um, that, that, those type of services. So I understand you're also launching a dedicated onboarding service uh, specifically for Canadian clients. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Yeah. So in Canada, we've been working really hard to make it easy for businesses, institutions, corporates to onboard with net coins. And uh, we found this to be a really important part of our business. We've had a number of individuals who own businesses or maybe have trade licenses that they'd like to have crypto on their balance sheet for and larger businesses who want to buy Bitcoin and other crypto assets. So uh, in order to work with our customers in this space, we wanted to make it really simple and easy for them to onboard with us. It's a different type of onboarding than an individual. There's different documentation and, and rules around these businesses to get signed up. So we want to make it quick and easy so you can do it online, digitally, upload your documents and get direct access to our team if you have any questions as well. Uh, as well. We think that um, we're probably the first to do this in Canada in a dedicated manner. Um, typically, there's a lot of emails, a lot of paper trails going back and forth, a lot of correspondence through threads. Um, we wanted to make it simple so you can get it done the first time. Um, and we think that it's a real advantage for net coins and for the businesses that want to get onboarded quickly to trade um, that net coins has a great proposition for businesses. Okay, excellent. Uh, I know nobody likes lots of forms and back and forth. So anything you can do to make that process easier, uh, I'm sure will be appreciated. I want to turn to the uh, the investment side of the equation now. So, you know, while investors can buy and sell cryptocurrency with net coins, they cannot invest directly in it. They can, however, invest in your parent company, Big Digital Assets. Uh, Big Digital shares have had kind of a rough ride so far this year. They're down about 50% since January. So, Fraser, I'm wondering if you can tell us why do you think now is a good time to invest in the stock? Why is Big Digital a stock to watch? Yeah, it's definitely a stock to watch uh, from a value perspective. You're right. Um, the market's taken the parent company down um, over time. We think we're in a good position where we've been building. Uh, we've been had a strong first quarter from a net coins perspective, from a big digital assets perspective. We just recently uh, released those numbers. Uh, we feel really confident in what we've been building as well. So the bear market of last year, uh, we spent a lot of time building out propositions that are going to make sense. So uh, evolving our services, having Andrew come and join it and take on the growth of our OTC sales and trading desk in both the United States and Canada has been really instrumental to our success. As well, we've launched over 49 crypto assets on the platform to date. So there's a lot to trade with net coins and really built out as far as the revenue side goes on how to generate new revenue streams. That includes the business onboarding that we talked about today. That is going to show significant growth from Netcoin side that's going to contribute to big digital assets. We've seen year over year growth on registrations, on volume, and on revenues. And a lot of that's contributed by Andrew and his new team members who will come on board in July. We think that from a bottom up, Netcoins is providing a lot of value into big digital assets. And of course, we're surrounded by two parent or two sister companies in Terra Zero and in Blockchain Intelligence Group um, that are really growing as well. So Blockchain Intelligence Group growing from a platform and a proposition perspective, new applications, new things being done with artificial intelligence that we're really excited about. 
and Terra Zero from their partnerships and their technology and having a bespoke solution that can be scaled quickly with a number of different clients uh, due to launch this year is also going to be a really exciting proposition for big digital assets. Yeah, I've had the opportunity to speak with some of your colleagues, uh, did an interview with uh, Blockchain Intelligence Group really recently. Uh, fascinating what they're doing in the area of fighting crypto crime. Uh, and Terra Zero also really quite interesting in the metaverse. Uh, and if we look at net coins and kind of the crypto ecosphere, if you will, for, um, for a moment, and we zoom out, uh, the biggest cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin and Ethereum, they are having a banner year. They've more than doubled in value over the past 12 months. The same is not true for a lot of altcoins, though, uh, though I know crypto watchers say that they may be close to bottoming out. And if so, I think that's probably definitely good for the space that Netcoins is offering in, making it even more interesting. So, Fraser and Andrew, I really appreciate the primer on OTC trading. And thank you both very much for joining us today. Thanks again for having us. Yeah, thank you. We've been speaking with Fraser Matthews and Andrew Bullman of Netcoins, and you've been watching Global One Media Stocks to Watch. I'm Michael Swedo.